Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Lead us now, Father, in Jesus' name, as we open thy word to study today, and we'll give God the praise in Christ's precious name. Amen. I'm reading today from Acts chapter 27, beginning with verse 21. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Now, we could spend days right here studying these verses that I've just read. But I want to speak primarily today about verse 25. But before we go into that, let me point out that all hope had been given up. Verse 20 in Acts 27, verse 20, all hope that these men should be saved was given up. The hurricane was so terrible. The storm was so mighty and so powerful. They had uh, thrown overboard all of their cargo to lighten the ship. They had dropped their sails. They had done everything. They had just turned the ship loose and the ship The Bible says, let her drive, and the wind drove the ship. It was helpless. Now, all hope was given up. But while these men had given up all hope that they should ever be saved and get out of that storm alive, the Apostle Paul was down in the hull of the ship talking to God. And after a long time, after a long abstinence, Paul stood in the midst of them, and he said, Sirs... You should have listened to me. I thank God for Paul's backbone. He wasn't a spineless jellyfish. He was a spiritual giant. He told them not to leave the fair havens. He warned them that if they sailed out of the fair havens, it would cost them exceedingly. But they said, the fair havens, this place is not commodious. This place is not inviting. There are no nightclubs, dance halls, bar rooms. There is nothing here to entertain us. It is not commodious, and that's what it means. There was no entertainment. It was a place where there was no nightlife. And so they said, they agreed that they would move on, and so they sailed out, and the soft winds blew for several days. The south wind, soft south winds blew, and they went right out in the middle of the Mediterranean, and then, brother, the hurricanes of hell broke out, and the winds began to blow, and the storms began to beat upon them, and all hope was given up that they should ever be saved. So, he said, I told you, I warned you, and you should have listened to me. Now, let me say this to you, dear people in Radio Land. I don't know how far I'll get today in this message, but regardless of how far I get, it's my duty to preach the word line upon line, and God didn't put these lines in here to fill up space And God didn't put these words in there to fill up space. And God didn't put them in there just to tell us about a storm. Now, Paul gave them some good, solid, sound advice, and they refused to take it. Now, let me say this in tenderness. Some of you dear people listening to me today, you say, Brother Green, it doesn't make any difference where I go to church. It doesn't make any difference what kind of religion I have. It doesn't make any difference how I worship, when or where, or who just so I am sincere. Now, why don't you practice that when you go to the doctor? Why don't you practice that when you go to the hospital? Why don't you practice that when you get your prescriptions filled? Why don't you say, it doesn't make any difference which doctor operates on me, just so he's a doctor? Why don't you say that? Why don't you say, it doesn't make any difference which hospital I go to, just so I go to a hospital? Why don't you say, it doesn't make any difference who fills my prescription, just so it's filled? No, no. When, you, when your body 
is to be operated on and you know that you must have surgery, you want a good surgeon, a surgeon that has a good reputation, a surgeon that knows what he's doing and knows what he's talking about. And will tell you the truth and will do his best to save your life, correct your trouble, and give you back your health. I think I speak with authority on this subject of surgery. I've had four major, and when I say major, I mean major in the true sense of the word, four major episodes of surgery in the past seven years. And when I have surgery, I want a surgeon that has a reputation, a surgeon that knows what he's doing. Now, that's good common sense. Well, if we are concerned that much about our body, then how much more ought we be concerned about our soul? Now, let me say this, beloved. If it doesn't matter where you spend eternity, it doesn't matter what kind of religion you have. But if you want to go to God's heaven, and if you want to see Jesus, and if you want to dwell in the pearly white city with Jesus and the saints of God, then I say, I say dogmatically and emphatically that it is a divine imperative that you go God's way. Now, you can't go your way. In Proverbs 16, 25, it says... There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now, Paul said, I warned you, but you wouldn't listen to me. You listen to the master of the ship. You listen to the owner of the ship. You wouldn't listen to me. Now, some of you dear people out in Radio Land, you say it doesn't make any difference who I listen to. If a man tells me that I can be saved by living a good life, then why isn't his gospel just as good as yours? I don't have a gospel. I'm preaching, thus saith the Lord God Almighty, and Jesus said, Nicodemus, except a man, any man, all men, every man, except man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3 and 3, 5 and 3, 7. 13 of Luke, Luke 13, 3 and 5, Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Now, beloved, it doesn't make any difference what ministers say or preachers or evangelists or teachers. It doesn't make any difference what any man has to say about the Word of God. The Word of God is forever settled in heaven, and the Word of God is final, and the Bible declares, except a man be born again. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life, no man. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, if you're listening to a minister or an evangelist or a teacher or anyone who tells you that you can be saved, who tells you that you can enter heaven anyway except by the new birth, repentance, and faith in Jesus Christ and His shed blood, then I warn you, you're listening to the same crowd spiritually that the master of the ship and the owner of the ship listened to, and they lost their ship, they lost their cargo, and if it hadn't have been for the Apostle Paul, they would have drowned. Oh, yes, they would have drowned had it not been for Paul. The only reason God saved that bunch was for the sake of the Apostle Paul. That's all, that's all. Now, I'm not talking about he saved them spiritually. I don't know. I suspect some of them were saved. I don't know how many of them were born again. But I, I feel sure that after that experience, I feel sure that some of these sailors accepted Christ that Paul knew, the Christ of Paul. But uh, not all of them. I don't think they were all saved. I doubt it very much. But their lives, their physical lives were saved. And the only reason God allowed them to get out of that sea was because of Paul and Paul's prayers. Now, he said, if you'd listen to me, you wouldn't have had this loss and you wouldn't have had this uh, terrible uh, this terrible catastrophe to come upon you. You wouldn't have lost your ship, you wouldn't have lost your cargo, and you wouldn't be in this service. But now he said, even though you didn't listen to me, he said, I want you to listen to me now. I exhort you to be of good cheer. Cheer up now, because Paul said there shall be no loss of life. Now, you not, you're not going to be drowned. There'll be no loss of life. You're going to lose the ship but your lives will be spared. And the reason I know there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Now, Paul said, I belong to God and I serve God. And God sent his angel. And God's angel stood by me in the ship tonight. And God sent me a message and I'm going to give that message to you. Now, don't you see, beloved, God could have spared Paul. God could have miraculously delivered Paul as he did Peter and others, well, as God delivered Paul from the jail in Philippi. And Peter from the jail, you remember. 
Now, God could have delivered him, but you see, God is giving these poor sinners one more chance to be saved. Now, God's giving you another chance. God's giving you a chance today, and God is throwing out the lifeline to you. And uh, I'm saying today that the Word of God calls and seeks, and the Word of God is a lamp and a light. The Word of God is quick and powerful. It's a sharp sword. It cuts. It divides asunder the Word of God. And God is throwing this message between you and an everlasting hell. So Paul said, now you men cheer up and get that sad, dismal, hopeless look off your face and listen to what I have to say. Now, you men, listen, I went down in the hull of the ship while you were crying out, no hope, no hope, no hope, and I talked to God, and God sent his angel, and God's angel told me to tell you that we'll lose the ship, we'll lose everything, but our lives will be spared. Now, don't you see, beloved, these men, before Paul said, do not leave the fair havens, don't leave the fair havens, and they laughed at him. What do you say that's not in the Bible? Well, it stands to reason they laughed at him. It stands to reason they mocked him. And they said, who are you? You're a prisoner. You're in chains. You're in bonds. And what do you know about sailing? You're telling us not to sail. You're telling us not to leave the fair havens. And they mocked him. And they would not listen to him. They listened to the master, the owner of the ship, and they set sail. Now, Paul said, if you'd listen to me, you wouldn't have lost the cargo. You wouldn't have lost the ship. But now he said, I talked to God last night, and God told me to tell you not to be afraid, to cheer up, that the ship will be lost, but all lives will be saved. God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Now, here's what I want you to see, beloved. Paul said to these men, I believe God. Now, There is no doubt that these men believe that there is a God. Now, I don't doubt that these sailors believe there is a God. In James 2.19, we read the devils believe and tremble. The demons believe. The devils believe that there is a God and they tremble. But that's not salvation. Now, watch it, for instance, in Romans chapter 4. Romans 4. What shall we then say, Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham... We're justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. No, that, listen, no flesh will glory in the presence of God Almighty. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26, 7, 8, 9, and 30, read all those verses, you'll find that Jesus is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, as it is written, He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord, that no flesh should glory in the presence of Almighty God. God refuses to allow flesh to glory in his presence. Now, beloved, it doesn't make any difference how much wisdom you have after the flesh. That'll never save you. It makes no difference how much righteousness you have after the flesh. All of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, Isaiah 64, 6. It doesn't make any difference what you do or what you don't do. That will not save you. Christ is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. So, we read that you cannot glory before God in flesh. For, what saith the Scripture? This is Romans 4, 3. Romans 4 and verse 3, what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God. Abraham didn't believe there is a God. Abraham believed God. Abraham didn't believe in God. Abraham believed God. He believed what God said. If you read Genesis chapter 12, God said, Abraham, get up and get out of your country. Leave your folks and go to a place I'll show you. God said, I'll bless you. I'll make you a blessing. I'll make you great and so on. And Abraham believed God. Abraham didn't argue with God. Abraham didn't say, give me a sign. People are always saying, give me a sign. Give me a sign. Give me a sign. I want to see something. I want to feel something. If God says it, you can believe it without seeing. You can believe it without feeling. If God says it, you don't need any sign. We walk by faith. And believing God is faith. And Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. Now watch it. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now that Greek word, counted, means it was imputed or it was put to his account. Abraham believed God, and God counted him righteous. Why? Because he had faith in God. He exercised faith in God. He believed what God said, and he did what God told him to do, and God marked it down righteousness 
to Abraham's account. All right. Now, to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David, David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. God imputes righteousness. May I have your attention, please? Listen to me very carefully. Now, I, I, I must get back to Paul and the storm. But this is so needful. This is so needful. Beloved, the only way that you will ever become righteous is for God to impute. The only way in the world I know to illustrate it is just to take a hypodermic needle. If you need penicillin, if you need B12, if you need uh, some other drug that is given uh, by injection, if you are bitten by a mad dog and you must get 21 rabies shots, they take a vial, they take a needle, and they put the medicine in the vial, they stick the needle in your arm. For instance, I've had 39 pints of blood. 39 pints of blood in the past six, seven years now. I've had 39 pints of blood. The doctor comes into the room, he takes that needle, and he sticks it in my vein. First of all, he asks me to make a fist and, and get a vein to stand up, and then he sticks that needle in the vein. Then he puts a piece of tape over it. Then he turns on the blood, and blood is imputed. Imputed. I don't take it by mouth. I don't take it in a capsule. It's put in my veins. Penicillin put in a vial and they stick the vial in your muscle and they impute penicillin. Now let me tell you something, beloved. If you ever step inside the pearly gates, if you ever step inside the pearly gates, if you ever walk on the streets of gold, it'll be because God imputes righteousness. And God imputes righteousness when you believe God, when you believe God and trust God and accept God in Christ. That's the only way. Christ is the door. Christ is the author of eternal salvation. Christ is the author and finisher of faith. Christ is the way, the truth, the life. And no man comes to God except in Christ. And God was in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.19, God in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Now Paul said to those men, and I haven't finished, I would love so much right now to have 15 more minutes to tell you what I'd like to tell you about this tremendous statement. Paul said, I believe God. I belong to God. I'm God's child. I serve God. God told me that the ship would be lost. God told me that not one man will be drowned. I believe God. Now, let me tell you, if you want to stay out of the flaming pits of the lake of fire, and I don't care what you believe about the lake of fire, what you believe about hell doesn't make any difference. This Bible got here before you did, it'll be here when you're gone. So you'd better forget what you believe about hell, and you better read the Bible. Now, if you want to escape the lake of fire, the only way to do it is to believe God. Believe God. God loved you, Jesus died for you, and God said, come to me in Jesus. Come unto me, I'll save you. And if you'll believe on Jesus right now, trust Jesus right now, accept Jesus right now, God will impute righteousness and you'll be saved. Father, honor thy precious word, O God, the word that brings saving faith, the word that brings the new birth. Honor thy word and save every soul that's under conviction, especially that poor church member that has never been saved. They joined the church, but they've never been born again. Save them by thy grace. In Jesus' name, amen.